Regarding quality nine, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth does not hurt anyone or anything look like in my personal life? Well, I, I, I no longer am governed by the concept that truth results in pain. Mm -hmm. That's the primary way in which it affects my life. I see that any pain that I experience is not the result of truth, but rather the result of error leaving me. Yeah. And so instead of um, denying painful processes, we are willing to accept painful processes as long as they are going to free us of the fear and pain that mm -hmm. is within us. Mm -hmm. We accept these particular processes as a part of our existence until such a time as we are free of the pain, whether it be emotional or physical. We no longer see truth as the cause of it. We see the error is the cause of it. We see the proper relationship between error and pain. Once we're in that condition, it changes the way in which we see most things that we experience. Because we, we start seeing that pain is not something to be avoided, yeah. but something to be embraced and experienced. We don't choose to create it. Also, we, we don't choose to create painful experiences, mm -hmm. but we choose to release painful emotions that have been from previous experiences that are painful. Yeah. Ironically, a person who doesn't understand this relationship will continue to choose to create painful experiences. So in other words, because they're in denial of the truth, there is no way for them to create a more happy experience in their future. Because they're in, in acceptance of the fear and pain-based experience and not releasing it, they then choose to make decisions based upon the suppression of this fear and pain-based experience. Mm -hmm. And that causes them to make more fear and pain-based experiences in their life. Yeah. It's only the absorption of truth that allows this cycle to stop. So we would stop blaming our pain on knowing more truth. Mm -hmm. We would start to see the importance of absorbing more truth. And in fact, we would develop a passionate desire to know more truth because we have broken this internal belief which is a false belief that there is a relationship between pain and truth. Yeah. The pain and truth relationship does not exist. Mm -hmm. right? It is not and has always it is not God's truth and has always been a figment of our own imagination. There is a direct relationship between error and pain. That does exist. And we need to come to accept that from an emotional perspective that this relationship exists. Mm -hmm. Now, when we understand that relationship, that error is the result of all of our pain, mm -hmm. and as a result, when we release error, we're going to have to release pain. We then start to um, accept the process of the release of pain. Yep. We no longer desire to get involved in situations or events that cause us to suppress our pain or that causes to suppress the error. We no longer accept beliefs that causes us to suppress error. Mm -hmm. We no longer desire to have error within us mm -hmm. as we did before. We no longer support error in our environment or our community or our worldwide belief systems. We, we confront those errors instead because we realise they, the re they are all the causes of our pain currently. Mm -hmm. So presumably that means that we don't choose to suppress truth in any situation because right. we know that it's not, um, divine truth never hurts anyone or anything. Exactly. And if it happens to expose error, then that's going to be the best thing for yes. everyone involved. And we, we know it's the best thing because we've experienced that in our personal life and we know it's the best thing. So, so instead of engaging a process where we're telling this person a white lie so that they can avoid that particular truth and saying a white lie here or a black lie there in order to, <laughs> yeah. to support you know, the, the person in their error-based position and help them avoid pain, we, we even see helping a person avoid pain as a error-based position mm -hmm. because we realise that pain and suffering is error yeah. based on, all based on error. So we don't support their suppression of pain. We want to help them release it. Yeah. So we would not even encourage the development of drugs that supported the suppression of pain. Mm -hmm. We would instead encourage the development of drugs that supported the release of pain if there was such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 
we, we would choose to engage our life in this really positive manner of sharing the truth all the time, never being afraid of the truth, never, be, never avoiding the truth in public experience or in public life or in our private life. We'd never avoid truth in our relationship, with our relationship with our parents, children, our partner. We would always be telling the truth. When they ask us what we feel, we'd always say what we feel, even if what we feel isn't very nice at the time. Yeah. We would do it in a manner that is not blaming them or criticising them or dumping on them, but we would choose to do it because that's what truth would do. Mm -hmm. Error wouldn't do that. Yeah. Error would compound the error. Yeah. Error would say another lie and cover over the previous one. Yeah. That's what error would do. We wouldn't choose to do that. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so on that, in that vein, some examples from our notes. So when we had a soul-based understanding that divine truth would never hurt anyone or anything, we would feel that withholding divine truth is harmful to everyone and everything around us. We would feel... Can we, can we talk about that? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so what, what I see happening a lot on the planet is that People say, people acknowledge that telling the truth is a powerful thing. But they feel that uh, it should only be engaged under certain conditions. Mm -hmm. And one of the conditions they feel it should be engaged is when the person wants it all the time. But living in harmony with truth means that you will want it all the time. Yeah. Right? So that means that everything you do will be harmonious with truth all the time. In every interaction you have with any other person, you will always be in harmony with truth all the time. The persons around you will learn that if they're going to interact with you, they're going to have to interact with truth all the time. And the reason why you choose to do this is because you love them. Mm -hmm. Not because you're afraid of them or because you're afraid of their emotions or you're afraid of your own emotional experience. Or that you want them to feel bad even. Or that you want them to feel bad. No. But just because you love them. Yeah. You know that it's the error that's in them that causes their pain. Mm -hmm. And as such, you wouldn't avoid telling them the truth when you had the opportunity. Now, if you started telling them the truth and they said, I don't want to hear that, well, that's okay. That's their choice and decision. Then you would not tell them. But if you were forced to be with them in any way, you'd pro you, you would choose to leave because you, you, you couldn't suppress your own desire to tell the truth yeah. under all circumstances. Yeah. So if somebody said to you, look, I don't want to hear that, and you say, no worries, I don't want to be with you either. <laughs> mm. Because you'd understand that, that just being with them in the state where you're having to shut down truth is not in your or their best interest. It's going to create hurt. Yeah. And so you wouldn't even choose to stay in situations like that mm -hmm. unless it was forced upon you. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there's some really big issues there that people like can confront if they fully feel that, truth has this power to, to free and make you happy rather than cause hurt. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, okay, another thing. I feel that when I compromise divine truth, I harm others as well as myself. Yes. So it's not just that withholding divine truth is harmful. It's actually compromising it. Yes. So every time I choose to make a compromise with error, I realise that that creates some kind of harm to both myself and to anybody else who has been a part of the compromise. So could we give some examples of that? Well, let's say I know the truth that you, let's say you were married and, and I know your partner's cheated on you and I'm his mate. Mm -hmm. And I know he's cheated on you because I, I, he told me about it, but he never told you. Mm -hmm. Now, my compromising with this truth and not telling you and not telling him to tell you or giving time to tell you and then and tell you myself if, if he didn't if take he didn't, that opportunity, yeah. I am compromising truth. In compromising truth, I am compounding the error. So not only now will you be upset with him because he never told you the truth and he did something that was, that was you know, betrayal, mm -hmm. But also, you'll feel the error of my betrayal. Yeah. There's an additional pain that you will experience as a result that you didn't have to experience yes. right? as a result of my choice to compromise the truth. Mm -hmm. And this is the result all the time. We see this happening in people's day-to-day -day lives all the time, yeah. where they compromise one truth and it just compounds the error and then it causes another 
error, another emotion, another pain to be created. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it happens all the time. Mm. Mm. Okay. When I understand that divine truth does not hurt anyone or anything, I feel I'm working in harmony with all of God's laws when I'm in harmony with truth. Yes, because all of God's laws are truth, so we can interchangeably use the term law with the term truth. Mm -hmm. Once we understand this relationship that, that truth and law is the same thing, then we will no longer want to compromise the truth because we understand that all laws are based around truth. Yeah. And so therefore, we know that every time we engage the truth, we're engaging the law in a positive direction. Just like every time we engage love, we're engaging the law in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And this means that we're working in harmony with the law. Now, when we're working in harmony with the law, there are positive benefits every time. When we work in disharmony with the law, there are negative consequences every time. Mm -hmm. So we understand that every time we engage the truth, we're working in harmony with law and there's always going to be a positive consequence. Even if we can't see it right now, there's always going to be a positive consequence. Yeah, mm. yeah, awesome. Okay, I feel when I tell the truth, it allows the free will of each person to the greatest extent possible. Yes, so there is this beautiful relationship between telling the truth and allowing people to make choice. Yeah. When you withhold the truth, you've already made the decision for them. Yep. This is something that we don't understand on the planet well. When you decide to withhold a truth from someone else that you know that they don't know, you're making a decision that they cannot cope with the truth. Mm -hmm. You've already made a choice for them. Mm -hmm. You're not honouring this gift of free will anymore. And you're also not honouring their capability to deal with truth, are you? Yes. You're saying you're, you're, you can't handle it. You're, you're basically being you're condescending. condescending. Yeah. yeah, because you're basically saying to the person, they can't handle the truth. Mm. <laughs> right? God created us to handle truth. It's the error that's painful yeah. that we don't handle very well. Yeah. But the truth God created us to handle with, with a breeze, you know, with, with simplicity. And every time we say, to, when we, every time we withhold the truth from another person, we're basically telling them that they're not capable of dealing with the truth, mm -hmm. and therefore they're not what God created them to be. Mm. And so that's a very damaging thing to teach them. Mm. 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 Okay, I feel when I withhold truth, I am harming free will of others, and addicted to living in fear. Yes, yeah, so that's very much related to that previous discussion we just had. Yeah, and that is that. When I tell the person a truth, I, I let them make their own choice. Yeah. When I withhold the truth, I'm, I'm living in my own fear, mm -hmm. but also I am stopping them from having a choice available yeah. or trying to reduce their ability to have a choice available. And that's going to be very, very damaging to them. So, so, so telling the truth gives them choice, yeah. withholding the truth removes choice. Yes. So like in your previous example of the wife who's been cheated on by her husband, yes. if that, with, that truth is withheld from her for 20 years, that's 20 years of her life where she didn't have the option to make a more informed decision about her relationship. Exactly. So it's 20 years she may finish up finding out the truth after 20 years mm -hmm. and, that, and she will feel like it's 20 years wasted. Mm. And she'll be very upset with anybody who knew the truth mm. other than her husband who didn't tell her. Mm -hmm. She'll be pretty upset with her husband not telling her. Yeah. But she'll also be very upset with anybody who knew the truth around her who didn't tell her because mm -hmm. they have basically wasted, they've been a part of her wasting 20 years of her life. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yep. <laughs> so so what, we finish up, what we finish up seeing under those circumstances is withholding the truth sometimes causes just as much damage as telling a person the error. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. In that example we were just discussing, the woman knowing the truth when it happened helps, gives her the opportunity to deal with the error within her yes. and to make better free will choices. Yes. But it also allows the possibility of the husband to yes. confront his error more And his fully. guilt. Yep, his guilt and the reasons why he took that action. Yes. Whereas when we uh, allow the lie, if you like, and everyone doesn't talk about it, there's less, um, there's less feedback to him to actually confront him with 
how out of harmony with not only is there less feedback been. about confrontation he's also getting his mates and friends agree with him mm -hmm. tacitly or overtly yeah both, yeah probably both yeah and when that happens they're basically agreeing that he shouldn't tell his wife yeah they're basically agreeing with the uh, uh, desire to restrict the choice from the wife. Mm -hmm. They're agreeing to the wife being controlled by something she doesn't know anything about. Mm -hmm. They're agreeing to the husband being out of harmony with love. And so, of course, there's going to be some negative consequences to these agreements. Well, certainly. <laughs> and that's the other thing that the truth would expose. Not only would it give the wife the capacity to deal with things and make choices, would confront the husband, but also it would confront all of those in agreement with mm -hmm. the husband yes. surrounding their own error. Yes. And, and their own belief systems about cheating on their partners and their own belief systems about whether that's allowable or whether you should fully disclose it when it happened. Their own belief systems about what honesty entails mm -hmm. in a relationship would all be confronted. And that, in fact, would assist their partners to make more informed decisions as well. And, and also so, have some trust in their relationship if they chose to make some positive choices in that yeah, regard. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I see, like, I feel like the truth is like a big love bomb that can go off <laughs> and it has all these shockwaves that go out and affect, has the potential to expose error, which actually has the potential for more love to grow. And more happiness to be situations. eventually obtained. Yeah. Yes. With all these people. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Next one. Um, so soul-based understanding that divine truth does not hurt anyone or anything. So I would feel that when others feel hurt by the truth, they are simply out of harmony with love of themselves. Exactly. Yeah. This is a very big thing is that a lot of people withdraw from any interaction with another because the other person feels hurt and violently expresses their hurt. Now, my response to such action is, no, you feel hurt because you just don't want to accept the truth. And the reason why you don't want to accept the truth is because you want to avoid the pain of the error releasing you. That's yeah. the only reason why you're upset now. Yeah. It's not my fault you're upset. It's, it's your choice to avoid your pain th yeah. that causes you being upset. That's the only reason. And so I don't take on the blame of other people's response to hearing truth that I've delivered. Mm -hmm. Now, a person who's in harmony with truth would never take on the blame that other people try to apportion to them for hearing the truth. Mm -hmm. They would never take on the blame. Mm -hmm. They would always see that the, that the pain the person is experiencing is the choice of their own desire for the error yeah. rather than the happiness that could result from them accepting the truth. I was just thinking about an example. I don't know if you remember this. We had lunch a little while ago with a man who wasn't listening to Divine Truth teachings, but he told us about an experiment that he'd done some 20 years ago with just telling the truth in all situations. Yeah. And no sooner had he made this decision, well, you know, I think truth's important, so I'm going to tell the truth. His neighbour came over, uh, knocked on the door and handed him a cake uh, as a gift. Yeah. And... Um, he accepted the gift and a couple of days later she came back and said, what did you think of the cake? And he said, oh, I've got to tell the truth. I actually didn't like it that very much. <laughs> and he told us that 20 years, she's still his neighbour and 20 years later she still begrudges him yeah. saying that he didn't like the cake. And yes. he actually gave up the experiment of telling the truth. Um, for that reason. Yeah, well, perhaps for a few for other probably reasons. probably many more reasons. <laughs> but, uh, he found it was too traumatic. But this idea that... Um, well, firstly... He was unable to experience his own emotion, firstly. Yeah. So the whole reason why he stopped doing that was because he didn't like to feel the attack. He took on the blame, didn't he? he? Well, not only... No, well, I don't or think guilt. he took on the blame because emotionally he still believes he did the right thing. Yeah. But he just felt that other people can't cope with it. Yeah. And because he feels that and is willing to modify the truth because of that, he attracts that all the time. Yeah. So in other words, whenever he tells the truth... Other people around him can't cope with it because of this emotion he has within him saying, you won't be able to cope with this, you won't be able to cope with this, and I'm going to get afraid of you when you can't cope with this. And it's his own fear of other people not being able to cope with the truth that causes him to revert back to the lie. Mm -hmm. Now, if he, was more, if he had more integrity to the truth, he would go, no, this woman's 20-year you know, Grudge. begrudge, begrudgement <laughs> of him telling the truth is her emotion mm -hmm. that she is unwilling to feel. Yeah. She asked him, was it nice? She wanted to hear, yes, it was. Yeah. 
but he was willing to tell her the truth. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a lovely thing because she's going to keep making cakes for <laughs> yeah. 20 years yeah. and then think they're all nice yeah. and most people around her are going to think they're terrible yeah. and not tell her, yeah. right? And eventually at some point in the future, she'll find she spent 20 years making cakes that were terrible. <laughs> yeah. And she'll find People out. People have been giving it to the, chooks, or to the chickens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she'll find out the truth, which will be much more extreme than it was just having one person tell her. Yes. If one person tells her, she has the ability to change the recipe yeah. and make it more tasty. But the fact that she still <laughs> is holding on to hurt and hasn't changed her recipe, that's showing a fair amount of resistance, isn't it, to Total. experience lots, of emotion? Lots of resistance yeah. to the experience of emotional pain. And lots of resistance to understanding that actually she doesn't make a nice cake, yeah. which is the main feeling she's avoiding, right? Yeah. And, and she's basically avoiding that feeling, yeah. that she doesn't make a nice cake. It would be far better if she felt the feeling, oh, well, I mustn't make a very nice cake. Have a good cry about it if she wants to cry about such things. <laughs> oh, perhaps then, she's got some emotional <laughs> investment in well, feeling she probably has. a good woman makes a good cake or yeah, something. Something like that. <laughs> but if she let go of the emotional investment, she'd go, okay, I'm going to find a, I'm going to find a <laughs> cake that I can take to the next door neighbour and say, and he goes, wow, that was the best cake I've ever <laughs> yeah. tasted. You know, that would be a nice goal instead of holding on to the grudge for 20 years. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so in the end, him telling her the truth would have helped her yeah. and would have helped many people other than her because yeah. many people other than her don't have to put up with bad cakes <laughs> yeah. as well. It would have helped, but, but she chose, mm. she chose through the denial of her emotion, she chose to have a different experience. She chose to avoid the truth. Mm -hmm. She chose to avoid her emotions. And then because she chose that and instead got angry with him, mm -hmm. he chose to avoid the truth yeah. because of people getting angry with him about it. Yeah. So he made a compromise now mm -hmm. about the truth. He was afraid of people's anger and now that's getting triggered. He now is compromising the truth. And so now he will get hurt by the compromise of truth. His soul mm -hmm. will degrade in its condition and other people will feel hurt from his compromise of truth. And he's actually associating the anger with truth rather than the anger with emotional error. Exactly. And his truthful actions being loving. Exactly. And exposing error. Exactly. Yeah. So he is, has an internal belief that the truth hurts. Yeah. Otherwise he would not make such associations. Yeah. He would never avoid telling the truth just because it appears to hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Or they claim it hurts them. Yeah. yeah. So the next on our list is, I do not try to embellish the truth or make it more palatable so that people will accept it. Yes, this is something I see happening frequently. People don't understand that the universal truth in its pure form is the best possible thing in all circumstances. Yeah. If you try to embellish it and make it more than what it is, you are in fact making it less than what it is every time. Yep. And in fact, you are almost demonstrating an arrogance towards God. Mm. You are basically saying that God's truth doesn't have the power that it has. And by you embellishing it or softening it, it's going to have more power. Mm -hmm. And that is completely false. It's completely false that any more power will result from your embellishment or your pandering and making it seem nicer than it really is. Yes. God never does that. And when we choose to be in harmony with God's truth, we never do that. Yeah. This compromise, in fact, is a compromise of arrogance where we believe we're we can make it better than it looks. Mm -hmm. When reality is, the truth, fully explained, is always the best it can possibly be. Yeah. And it makes me think about uh, some years ago when you first started doing bigger public seminars and we attracted some people who would say things to you like, you're too direct with people, mate, you know, you've got to, you've got to ease them into it a bit rather than just saying, yeah. which is really quite condescending to the audience, isn't it? Very. And it also uh, displays the belief that you have to sort of um, pander to people before they'll open up. Exactly. Which means that they already have a lot of demands. Exactly. It? Which all means they already have a lot of emotional area you should already be confronting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also surrounding uh, the way we video things and record things. People saying, oh, you need music and you need 
big production yep. and polish. And while these days we have a few lights, we still just start the video camera rolling and just yep. record anything and everything that happens. Exactly. Yeah. Which is us kind of honouring this idea that the truth doesn't need embellishment. Yes. Even the truth of our day-to-day -day lives doesn't need to be polished over. No. Because when we approach God more and more, the, in closeness in our relationship with God, things naturally become a lot smoother and yes. a lot more pretty, don't they? Yes. Yeah. So we don't want to waste people's time. We, we want to present f clear information and clear facts. But, but we also want to do it in such a manner that it's real, that it's not based around a facade. We don't want to create an image. We mm -hmm. want to leave it be what it actually is. Mm -hmm. This is how God is with us. God wants us to be the person we actually are. Yeah. So every time I try to embellish the truth or pander to people's desire to create a facade, what I am actually doing is believing the truth hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm believing the truth has some kind of negative thing. It doesn't. It's always positive. It's always better to present things as they actually occurred. Yeah. And this is where, like, the majority of people in the media don't understand that at all. The majority of people, uh, you know, who live on the planet don't understand that at all now. They all want the facade many times. Mm -hmm. And they want the facade because they want the facade in their own life because it covers over a whole heap of emotional experiences that they'd be better off experiencing, but they choose not to because they're afraid of the pain of it. Yeah. So it's far better to just be frank, upfront, direct, straightforward, clear as a bell, right, you know, as it's happening, than it is to pander to all these other experiences. So there's no need to make fancy things this and fancy things that. There's just a need to be clear because mm -hmm. it, it's the clarity that has the power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, final one, which is related to our previous one. I feel that when I try to embellish truth, I'm not honouring God, the creator of truth. Yes. So if we understand that divine truth is God's truth, God's truth belongs to God, every time I compromise it, every time I try to embellish it, every time I try to put a facade on it, every time I try, time I try to manipulate it in some way to make it more palatable to the listener, all I'm doing is demonstrating my dishonour of God. That's really all I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm showing God that I dishonour God in that process. So I'm arrogant with God and I'm distancing yes. myself from, from God. God. So that. if I want to have a relationship with God while at the same time dishonouring God, the relationship's not going to go very well. No. It would be honouring of God to tell the truth as it is, but only the truth that you know is God's truth. Mm -hmm. That's honouring God. And when you have a personal opinion that you might not be God's truth, say you've got a personal opinion. That's honouring God. This is my personal opinion, very different to what I know to be God's truth at this point. Yeah. So, so when we do that, we are actually demonstrating that we understand that we are in this very limited condition and God's in this infinite condition of knowing true, all truth. We are in this very limited condition of knowing a very, very minor part of truth. And when we honour that fact by telling the truth that God has already shown us to be true, mm -hmm. we're honouring that fact. We're showing people, no, I honour the fact that this is a God's truth, yeah. not my own. Yeah. And I'm honouring that even though sometimes I feel like I don't want to tell it. <laughs> yes. you know, I'm afraid for some reason yeah. I don't want to tell it. I'm still going to honour it because it's God's truth and it's that important. Yeah. Without it, no change can occur. Without it, no happiness can come. Without it, no love can be felt. Mm -hmm. I need to say it when it's there, yeah. as it is, yeah. in its unadulterated form. Mm. So this is a very important part of understanding this principle that God's truth does not hurt. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just in looking back over the notes that I've sort of been drawing from, everything that we've discussed here, when we have a soul-based understanding that God's truth doesn't hurt, there's a feeling within us of all of these points that we've discussed. Yes. Every, every um, point that we've raised begins with, I feel, feel that. So in other words, I feel I can't withhold the truth. Yeah. I feel it with all my heart and I can't do it. Because it, I know. Even though sometimes I'd like to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the feeling in me drives me. Yeah. To, and it's a do. loving feeling, not a feeling of yes. wanting dominance or power. It's a feeling of, yep. no, withholding the truth is actually going to affect people's free will negatively. Yes. Yeah. And if the feeling does not drive me, 
then it means the truth is not in my heart yet. Mm -mm. It's just in my head. That's what it means. And in those instances, I have to be very conscious of what feeling is in my heart driving me to speak, don't yes, I? Yes, yes. Because often it will be dri driven by some avoidance of another emotion yep. and or some desire to attack somebody with the truth yep. or some other motivation. Yep. When we truly feel the truth in our heart, we're driven by it without any ulterior motive, yeah. without any desire to harm, without any desire to attack, just with a desire to help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Yep.